Bonjour, ça va, Monsieur Cohen? Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Beluchim Abaim to everyone. Adam Shabbat Kodesh, Perashat Bayhi, Makam Hijaz, the 13th day of Tevet, the 6th of January. 2023. Today's class graciously sponsored by uh, Mr. Albert Weck, Le'ayu Nishmat, Mr. Charlie Saka, Alava Shalom, Yeshaya, Ben Lola, Iratzon, that the words of Torah elevate his Neshama in Gan Eden. Amen. Additionally, today's class graciously dedicated for the Refua Shelema of Tinok, Ben Adina Shira, Abraham Ilan Ben Elisheva, David Ben Rosa, Esther Bad Victoria and Berachave Aslaha for Simha Bad Michal. Today, as we come into the end of Sefer Bereshit with Berashat Bayhi, let's devote a few minutes to discuss powerful messages that this week's Berashat brings upon us. One of the things that we are going to be noticing tomorrow, <coughs> it's fine, it's fine, is about the writing of the Sefer Torah. In the halachot of the Perashiot in the Sefer, there is a concept called Petuha and Setuma. Petuha means open space, Setuma basically means no space. And there is a, a debate in the halacha exactly where a new Perasha begins, hot water only. Thank you so much. Where a new Perasha begins. Okay? Sometimes the perasha begins on the same line as the previous perasha ended, provided that you have a space of nine letters in between. That's one of the highlights to know that is a new perasha. Sometimes, if the space is not big enough, we will press enter, so to speak. We begin the perasha on the new line. This is the way it works. Thank you so much, Harvey. Needless to say, that when we're talking about a homage between Bereshit, Shemot, Baikrav, Amidvar Devarim, the distances between each homage is a much greater of several lines. But there is one exception in the inter Perashiot connection, and it's this week's Perashat. Perashat by He basically doesn't have literally any space with the exception of the minimum required space of one letter when it comes to last week's perasha to this week's perasha. Last week's perasha, perasha by Gash. The perasha finishes by fru, by irbu me'od. The Jewish people became very fruitful. They multiplied tremendously. And immediately, with the space of one letter, begins by he. So when tomorrow morning, we take out the Sefer Torah, and we show the Sefer, when we say, Bezot Torah, you need to be attentive that no, you're not going to find the Perasha by He in the beginning of a paragraph or with a mega space of nine spaces. You're going to see by He the word by He Vav, literally less than half an inch between the last word of last week's Torah portion. This is called Setuma, closed Perasha. And the question is, why? Farvus. Why? So the answer is as follows. Why? If you look in Rashi, you'll see, and as well as many other great Talmidei Hachamim, and Rashi brings the Midrash Rabbah, that it says, Shekevan sheniftar Yaakov, nistevu anehem belibam shel Yisrael, misarat ha-she'ibud, shithil ha-she'ibud. Very simple. The Rashi brings two answers. I read one, I did not read the second one. The second one will be forthcoming in a few moments. But she says, the moment that Yaakov Avino passes away, there was like a closing of a chapter in Jewish history. Mm -hmm. Jewish history was the lifetime of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Mm -hmm. Yaakov Avino passes away. We close the book of Bereshit, and we welcome the book of Shemot. What is the book of Shemot all about? Mm -hmm. At least the first few weeks, the slavery in Egypt. So the Torah is hinting us, Yaakov Avinu passed away, the slavery began. 
This is one Rashi's explanation. Second explanation of Rashi. And the Perasha says it very clear. You know, Yaakov Avino, prior to passing away, he wanted, and it says, Easefu, gather, and I will tell you basically when Mashiach will come. Bikesh legalot etaketz. That is the second explanation of Rashi. That when Yaakov Avinu wanted to reveal Mashiach times, Nistam Avimeno, it was blocked from him. Like there was a mental block. And Nistam and Setuma are the same letters. Satuf. Sometimes in Hebrew, they use a derogatory statement, right? Husatum. Husatum. What's the meaning of Husatum? He's close, he's close-minded. It's not something nice to say. It is not something nice to say. It's a belittling word. It's like you're trying to, you bring down the person, has the shalom. In Spanish, they may say obtuso, you know, obtuse, right? That you're out of the angle of circumference. You have the different angles, right? You have 45 degrees, 90 degree, 180. I remember math class, okay? Sure. And we used to use the transformer, right? Remember that? The plastic transformer to transform the radio and the perimeter and the angle. I'm not gonna go into math and algebra. Don't, 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 don't test me. Geometry, correct. Geometry, but it's all connected. It's all to the family of math and equations. So Yaakov Avinu wanted to reveal one Mashiach comes. And if you look in the Pirasha, he says, Yaakov summoned his children by Yomer, and he said to them, He has a fool, assemble me yourself, and I will tell you, what's going to be in your future. And obviously, Rashi says, God says, hold on a minute, you're about to reveal secrets. I didn't give you permission to reveal secrets. God says, I'll see you later. <laughs> then suddenly, he lost the Wi Fi. <laughs> Imagine yourself, okay, you're watching the World Cup final, it happened. I told you the other day the story. And when you're about to shoot the penalties, the Wi-Fi goes down. It happened, it happened, it happened. It happened here. Not in the shul, outside of the shul. Or we said, give me the helim, the Wi-Fi went down. True story, by the way, I was involved in that story. So suddenly God says, you're about to say something that I didn't give you permission. God says, nistaleka mi menno. God left him. And he gave different messages to his children. Now, are we understand, let's be honest, how exciting would have been that Yaakov <coughs> reveals to his children the day that Mashiach comes, that is a very dangerous move. Because if God forbid, God forbid, Yaakov says to his children, you know what, in the month of Tevet, 75783, which is our current month, Mashiach will come. Be'ezat Hashem. Now, can you imagine they are listening to this statement from Yaakov in the year 2000 and 200 and change? I'll How many years in between? 3,400 years, if not more. So what's going to be? So if that's the case, why should I do anything? I'm threading water. So therefore, Akadosh Baruch Hu says, no. One of the 13 principles of faith is Every day the person hopes and prays that the Geula will come. That is the reason why in Gemara, Masechet Shabbat, it brings one of the four questions after 120. One of the questions is, I think it's question number uh, four. Did you hope for Mashiach to come in your days? in your generation. So therefore, God says, you're ruining for everyone. So that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu did not allow Yaakov to reveal. But I will tell you that in the bless, in the Pasuk of the Perashah, there is a hint, what can we do to expedite Mashiach's arrival? Let me read the Pasuk again. Vayikra Yaakov el Banan. Yaakov gathers, Yaakov summons his children. Vayomer heasefu. Unite yourself. You know what Yaakov Avinu says? The moment that is going to be unity among the Jewish people, Ahavat Hinam. 
Because what was the reason Second Temple was destroyed? Sinat Hinam. Baseless hatred. What does that mean, baseless hatred? No reason. Hazaku Baruch. No reason. Why don't you like this guy? I don't know. I just don't like him. Okay? For example, and the Torah says the opposite. He has sefu. When there is the unity and harmony among the Jewish people, then Mashiach will be expedited. Let's go back to the beginning of the Perashah. Today, I may concentrate on different messages of the Perashah that everyone can use in the Shabbat table. And that's why I switched a bit the, the concept of the class of uh, Friday. So this way, whoever may be in the, in the, in the virtual audience of Aitora or us, at least we have a beautiful insights. So we already explained why the Perasha is closed. Because the, it affected the life of the Jewish people. Suddenly the Jewish people became known to the Egyptian environment and eventually we know the slavery and the ultimate redemption through Moshe Rabbeinu. That by Ezat Hashem, starting Sunday, Sefer Shemot, Perashat Shemot, we're going to understand more about our life in Egypt. Let's go to another beautiful message of this week's Perasha. One of the most beautiful costumes that the Jewish people have is to bless their children on Shabbat night. Okay? Sephardim and Ashkenazim. Of course. Of course. This is a universal tradition. The only question is when to do it. In some Ashkenazic traditions, they do it when they come home from the synagogue. Other traditions do it after Kiddush. I think that the prevailing Sephardic tradition is after Kiddush. The way it's brought down, <coughs> excuse me, in many Sidurim. Baruch atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shekho Niyah Bikorah. Yaakov Avinu says to uh, Yosef, listen to these words. Becha Yevarech Israel. Yaakov Avinu on that day in this wish perashah says to Yosef Becha Becha means in you with your children that's going to be universal blessing for the Jewish parents. That's exactly what Rashi says. A person that comes and blesses his children he will say Yesimecha Elokim Kefraim Bechim Nashe So far so good for the girls. What do we say? Beautiful. It's, it suits. It suits. Now your question is, why don't you say Abraham is Hakan Yaakov? If you say Sarah Rivka Rahel Vele'ah for the girls, why don't you say Abraham is Hakan Yaakov? If you come tonight to the Safra Synagogue, you may hear the answer. I know. Too long. I know, Habibi, but I, that's part of the excitement. <laughs> yeah, but All right? But I'm going to give you something different. Oh, okay. And you will say, I like it. I always like it. No, but sometimes you see it right away. Sometimes you need to digest a bit the idea. So I'm going to quote very quickly from a beautiful uh, printout that my brother sends me every week uh, from uh, Brooklyn, but it's all in Hebrew and discusses this idea of Ephraim and Menashe. So it says as follows. We need to maybe go back a few Pesukim prior to the actual blessing. Let's see the interaction between Yaakov and Yosef. We all know the switching of the hands. Correct? So we're not going to discuss into that. But I want to read to you some Pesukim that really, these are Pesukim that I really don't understand. And we're going to call in the reinforcements to open up this Pesukim. One Pesuk says, Beata Shenebanech, I'll go straight into English, and now these two children that were born to you in Egypt until my arrival, 
Ephraim and Menashe, now they belong to my tribe, they are equal like Reuben and Shimon. Beautiful. The next Pasuk says, May you be fruitful like the fish on the land. The angel that relieved me from all evil, bless the children, and be fruitful like the fish on the planet Earth. That's a new beautiful uh, beracha, beautiful beracha. So let's start understanding. And the other one is Be'yesimecha Elokim Kefraim Bechim Nashe. Why do we say that Ephraim and Menashe above Abraham, Ishak, and Yaakov? So I'm going to explain these three questions based on this printout. Uh, the first one, it comes from the, you have a few sources. You have the Likutesi Hot, you have the Benishai, you have the Al Sheikh, and you have the, the Kafa Haim. Holy, 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 holy great Hakamim. Great, each one in their generation. So it says as follows Also, the Al Sheikh and the Ramban, the great Nachmanides. Remember, we talked about the Al Sheikh the other day. You know what happened yesterday? You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. What did they speak about yesterday or the day before? The Makam Hijaz. Remember the Makam class? Yes. And we explained the tune. the tune and we quoted from Sefer Haredim. You know what happened yesterday? Somebody is in Israel and sends me a picture of the cover of Sefer Haredim and Rabbeinu Ha'ari <coughs> in the holy graves in Tzfat. If you stay after the class, I'll show it to you. <coughs> I will tell you the following. I'm not sure if this person listened to the class that I gave. He might have. Maybe he did, yeah. maybe he did not. Got to be. Uh, that's what I would like to believe. And I'm going to ask the person yeah. when it comes back from Israel, did you listen to my class or not? <laughs> but for me, the answer is irrelevant. The fact that a person was yesterday in the Kevarim of Rabbeinu Ha'ari, and it could have been in the Kevarim a week ago. But what, you know why they, they sent me the picture yesterday night? Because now the Sadiqim say, hold on a minute, we have somebody in Miami, it's true what I'm saying, a holy group of people, like you told me, you went to the Peleo Es Kever, and you went to the Mikveh of the Peleo Es, and made a siyum in the Kever of the Peleo Es in Bulgaria. Unbelievable. Yeah, you understand what it means when you speak about Sadiqim? It's not the day of the Yorzai. If it's the day of the Yorzai and you speak about them to remember them, it's a given that now you have a connection. But in the middle of nowhere, that it just connected the language of the Gemara that speaks about uh, Haredim li Libre Hashem, and we learn a bit from the Sefer Haredim, and 24 hours later or less, I get a picture from Israel live, from Rabbeinu Hari, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, and, and uh, Sefer Haredim, for me, he's sending us a message, boys, thank you so much for whatever you did. And guess what? It's not my zehut. It's the zehut of everyone that was here in the class. And listen to the class or watch the class <clears throat> via Aitora. Remind me after the class to show you the pictures. Unbelievable. It was like I was there on top of that. I think they lit candles in our honor in the cavern. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So, we have a popuri. Rabbeinu Moshe by Nahman, Rabbeinu Moshe al Sheikh, and the Likutei Sihot. The Likutei Sihot is a compendium of uh, Sihot of, uh, on the Penasha by the Lubavitch Rebbe Alam Shalom, the one that's buried in the Ohel in Queens. And it says, everybody I'm sure goes there. I personally go whenever I have an opportunity when I'm in New York, because it's a holy place. You know, in America, I'm not sure where all the Kevarim are. But I know one thing for sure, that that Kever is there. So it says, that's where Hacham Shilomo Amar was there the other day. I missed him. 
you know, two sadikim on the same moment is easy. Heavy. It's not easy to come across. But I was happy to <laughs> see him there. So it says as follows. Why did Yaakov need to say to Yosef, and now your two children that were born in Egypt, they are mine, like Reuben and Shimon. Everybody, everybody knows that Ephraim and Menashe were born in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Where do we know? Did you see his birth certificate? No, but how do we know this? Because the Torah tells me before the birth of Ephraim and Menashe, before the years of famine kicked in in Egypt, they were born. Uh -huh. So you already have the Torah that is telling me, by the way, birth, birthplace of Ephraim and Menashe, Egypt. Egypt. So listen to this fascinating Hiddush. You know, how can somebody say, your children are mine? First of all, Yaakov Avinu was the grandfather of Ephraim and Menashe. And the Gemara says, Bene banim ke banim. Grandchildren are like your children. Sometimes people love more their grandchildren than their children. Unconditional love. That's it. That's why many times grandkids want something, they go to the grandparents. They skip them. Why they do that? Because there is some conditional love. So Yaakov Avinu says to Yosef, listen to this. It says, You, Yosef, says Yaakov, you lived in Egypt, you develop yourself as a man in Egypt, you remain a Sadiq in Egypt, and you have children Sadiqim, I want them in my team. Imagine yourself, you have to create a dream team of Hakamim, or a dream team of Hazanim. Relax. I was about to speak about the PSG in France. Relax. I'm not going to bring examples of the Goim. That's why I use dream team of Hachamim. Can you imagine you have on your table this Hacham and that Hacham and this Hacham and that? Okay, it's unbelievable. Or you do a night of Hazanim and you have XYZ Hazanim, you have to do a Hafla, you do something of Simcha, of Kedusha, Shabbat Bakashot, Hazar of Baruch. Right, three o'clock in the morning. That's when Ades starts the Bakashot. Yes, I was invited every time I'm in Israel. I said, it's too early for me. I come to the seven o'clock minyan. Yeah, to wake up at three, to be there at 3 a.m. And they sing between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. And then everybody, you know. More or less. Now, so Yaakov says, if you remain a holy person, if your children became holy, I want them in my dream team. I want them to be part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Now, that's number one. So therefore, Yaakov Avinu, interesting that from all of the grandkids of Yaakov, the only two that we know well and they are part of the tribes, are the sons of Yosef. But I will tell you perhaps one more Hiddush that I think you're going to like it. I left you hanging with a question before of the sons, why not Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov? So I'm going to explain to you the following. One answer is that Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov each one lived a very difficult and challenging life. Abraham with his father, Abraham and Nimrod, Abraham with his relatives, Ishaq with Ishmael, Yaakov with Esav, Yaakov and his sons, Yosef and his brothers. From the creation of the history, of the world till this week's perasha, the first time that two brothers had unconditional love with each other were Ephraim and Menashe. Do the calculation. Cain and Hevel, disaster. Shem, Ham and Yafet, disaster. Abraham, Haran, not good neither. Ishmael and Ishaq, not good neither. Yaakov and Isav, not good neither. 
Yosef and his brothers, not good neither. Who were the first two brothers that irrelevant of what happened, that Yaakov showed a certain, a, 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 how do I say this? Affection. affection, but not it's really affection, it's like the priority boarding in blessings, preference, was the younger one, because Menashe was the Behor, and Ephraim was the young, the young one. But yet, guess what? Menashe had no issues. Menashe understood that Ephraim was supposed to be in the driver's seat. Why? Because Menashe connected more with Yosef Asadik. Menashe was a great man as well, but followed to a certain extent the governmental position of his father Yosef. Ephraim gravitated towards Yaakov Avinu, so continue more with Torah. So the father says to their son, I want you to have a relationship with your brother like Ephraim and Menashe. That's the reason why we say Ephraim and Menashe. In the girls' department, we haven't seen any hiccups with between sisters. We haven't seen any issues with ladies. Sarai Menu, great. Rivka, unbelievable. Rahel and Leah, they loved each other. That's why Rahel gave all the kavod to Leah. So when it comes to the ladies' department, it's less complicated than men. That's why we tell the girls, be like Sarah, Rivka, Rahel, and Leah. Holy. But when it comes to the bro, to the son, we say, I'll be happy if you live in peace and harmony with your brother. That's the reason why we mention Ephraim and Menashe. You good? Ephraim is the one who's more. Torah. That's why we put Ephraim first. Because he learned with Yaakov. Yeah, Hazaku Baruch. And that's what Yaakov Avinu says. It says, your two sons are a success story. That, my son, says Yaakov, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Zachar, Zebulun, they are holy men and righteous men. Not a problem. They live in Goshen. They live in Monroe. They live in the cities of Sadiqim. But your children, born and raised in Egypt, and remain as holy as they are, I'm going to give them a promotion to be part of the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is when the Shevet of Yosef got split in half. That's why we say, Ephraim and Menashe, that's why we say, Lihem, I want them with me. So I think that all these Pirushim are powerful and are beautiful. He actually said, my question. The as well, so you have the double portion. Everything. Now, we talked about the fish. Remember the Beracha that Yaakov gave? Hamalach ha-goel oti mikora. Many times you hear this in a Berit Milah. Sometimes you see that parents bless the children. I personally, when I say the Beracha to my children, even though all of them are up north, and, uh, but I say the Beracha virtually. Virtually. I have a piece of paper that I prepare in advance. So this way I remember to have everyone with the respective family, sons, daughters, son-in-laws, daughter-in-law, granddaughters, grandsons, and then I say, Yesimecha Elohim Kefrai Mechim Nashe. Then I say, Yevarechecha Hashem Bishmerecha. Then I say, Ve'yiten lech, no, Ve'yiten lecha, Amalach, with this pasuk, Amalach ha'goel oti mekorai yivarechet ha'nearim. Then I say, the first three pasukim of Ve'yiten lecha. Okay, but I remember, important to say this publicly, that before, I saw this in the name of the Pele Yoez, I believe, and it says that the Pasuk writes, Becha Yevarech Israel. What is the meaning of Becha Yevarech Israel? Through you. Through you. Baruch. But you know what the Pele Yoez says? A fascinating Hiddush that I didn't know until I learned the Pele Yoez, which I've done a few times. I'd like to learn it again. We can do something. He said the Pele Yoez says that before you bless your children, 
Bless God. <coughs> and that's why I explained you how to do it. Very easy. You know the blessing to bless God. I'll tell you in a minute. You know when it says Becha means in you. In you means Hashem. Mm -hmm. So what are you supposed to bless God with? One short pasuk that you know the pasuk. Yehishem Hashem Mevorach Me'ata Ve'ad Olam. The pasuk that we say every day of our life, mm -hmm. especially in the Syrian world. In the rest of the Sephardic world, this is not said every day. If you say Anna, you don't say Yehishem. In the Syrian tradition, we say Yehishem, rain or shine. You finish Anna, Yehishem. Sha'arit or Minha, Yehishem. So everybody knows this Pasuk. So before you say the Beracha, you should say, Yehishem Hashem Meborach Me'ata Ve'ad Olam. You took care of God. Then you say, that, that sentence, short sentence. The short sentence, Yehishem Hashem Meborach Me'ata Ve'ad Olam. A few words, Chalas. Then you say, Yesimecha Elokim Kefraim Mechim Nashe. Or you say, Yesimech Elokim Kesaralif Kara Hevelia. I say Elokim because I'm not actually giving a blessing. Right. When you're going to bless at home your children physically or remotely, you say the way it's written in the Pasuk because you're actually saying a blessing. And then you say, Birkat Kohanim. That's usually the blessings. But the way the Benish High writes, you can add as many blessings as you want. Maybe your Hebrew fluency is not that much. You can say it in English, you can say it in Spanish. The main thing is, bless your children because there is a great power of Beracha, it says in the Zohar Kadosh, that parents and Hachamim have Shabbat night. That is very customary, and we do it in this synagogue and many synagogues of the world, I believe, I've seen it from childhood, that when Tefillah of Shabbat finish, people go to the Hacham, people go to the Rabbi, and they wish him Shabbat Shalom. You know, if you're gonna give Biracha to each one, it will take an hour and a half to get home. <laughs> you know, the other day somebody said, I'm not too happy with you, Rabbi. I said, what did they do wrong? I said, I came to you to wish you Shabbat Shalom, and I wanted to speak to you. I said, Rohi, did you see how many people were in line to say Shabbat Shalom? Yeah, like 200 people. I said, you expect me that I'm gonna start talking to each one for the amount of time that you want? Proper. It's not proper for the person. Anyone who wants to talk to me in Shabbat night, I said, do me a favor. Many times people, Rabbi, I have a halachi question. Great, not a problem. Do me a favor, wait for me a few moments. You have to be a bit sensitive when the people come. But there is 200 people. And this is nothing. If you go to the Hasidic courts, Oh, you go to the Hasidic synagogues, it may be hundreds, if not thousands. The whole shul. Okay, so there is such a custom of getting beracha, Shabbat night, etc. And I said this, the virtual beracha, because I know for a fact that many people don't have their children next to them. You are visiting from Panama. Your kids are in deal. Your kids are in deal. Your kids are in Mexico. Your kids are in, 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 in New York or in Brooklyn, wherever they may be. Whatever they may be. Anyone in the world. Believe me, the Benachot of parents always have the power, the irrelevant of the distance that you may be. But I'll tell you one more thing that I do every Friday afternoon. We speak to all the children and we give the Beracha over the phone. That's an advanced Beracha. But I want the real time Beracha. So the real time Beracha is Shabbat night. Shabbat night. After we welcome the Shabbat, the Shekhinah, we are in a Shabbat mode. Friday afternoon, we are always in a rush. Sometimes we play phone tag. I call voicemail. No, I'm getting ready because Shabbat in Brooklyn is an hour earlier. Okay, so I need to plan it properly. Sometimes I remember I call my sister or my mother in Brazil or in Israel, and I forgot that there is seven, seven hours. hours ahead. So when I call, my sister tells me, yeah, uh, I see in the, that you call me after Shabbat on the voice note, because I leave, I'm sorry, I call late, I'll call you after Shabbat. Say, yeah, by the time you call me, she made the calculation, they were already in dessert of Shabbat uh, meal. But they didn't have 
they changed, they switched the clock in Israel. So instead of being seven hours, or instead of being six hours, it became seven hours. But now I, I did it already. I do it usually Friday morning early, at least to Israel. I call this way. I'll take care of everyone, etc. Now, one more. And I think that uh, we can call it a day in a few more seconds. It says as follows. <clears throat> Remember yesterday, we talked about, before yesterday, I left one question hanging. The Berachad of Yaakov says, Hamalach HaGoel Otim Ekorah, the whole Pasuk, and it says, Beit Gul Arov, Bekerem Ha'ares. That means, increase with abundance like the fish. It's true. The fish has two, how do I say this? Function. Not functions. Advantages. No, disadvantage. To a, to a one advantage and one disadvantage. This comes from the Benish High. And also for the Bishel of Mount Gansfried. The Bishel of Mount Gansfried, maybe you never heard too much of his name, but he's the author of the Kitsu Shuchan Aruch. There is a version, a rich version of the Shuchan Aruch. In school, we learn as children, we learn Kitsu Shuchan Aruch. What did this great Hakam do? He took the Shuchan Aruch and made the abridged version, practic practical halachot. You do this, you don't do that. You do that, you don't do this. For elementary school, it's learning. That's how we grew up as young children in South America. As you grow, so then you learn halakha in depth. So these two hachamim, the Benishai, Ben Shilomon Gansfri, they both say something similar and unbelievable because they live in two different generations and probably they never met each other. One lives somewhere in Baghdad and the other one lives somewhere in Europe, in Russia, or in Poland, who knows back then in the day. But they both say one of the challenges of the fish is that the big fish eats the small fish. That's a given. The big consumes the small. That's the disadvantage of the fish. If you're a small fish, your days may be counted, God forbid. But there is another benefit of the fish, the amount of eggs that a fish carries. If you ever open up a fish, you see a tremendous amount of eggs inside. So what Yaakov says, I want only the blessing of the fish. I want you to be fruitful and to be able to multiply. I don't want the one that eats each other. Like in the business world, you become a shark. Sometimes in the world of business, what they say? Shark. Okay? Long shark, shark tag, like he said. Why they use that word, shark? Because it's a killer fish. Okay? So Yaakov says, I don't want the attack. I want the bountiful, the abundant blessing. Now, and concerning the last question that we left hanging, the Kafa Haim explains why specifically Yaakov said Ephraim and Menashe. Let me ask you a question. Would it be a beautiful beracha, be successful in business like Zebulun? Be successful in Torah learning like Issachar? Be a warrior and a leader like Yehuda? But none of the above were mentioned. Yaakov says, I want your descendants and the Jewish people to be like Ephraim and Menashe. So we gave one reason before, that they were the two brothers who loved and respected each other and they were happy for each other and each one recognized the advantages that each other had. Beautiful. But it says the Gemara in, uh, I think it's Baba Messiah, talks about the Ainara, the evil eye that we discussed yesterday. So the Gemara says that the Gemara writes a very interesting statement that says, uh, Anna, I, de Yosef ka Atina. I am a descendant of Yosef. De la shalta be'aina bisha. That the evil eye 
doesn't affect me. That's what the Gemara says. So it says the Kafa Haim, and it says as follows, that the descendants of Yosef are immune to Ainara. And we know that Ainara can happen in many ways. Sometimes, believing excessively in the Ainara, you will become a customer of the Ainara. That's number one. Wait, wait. Number one. Number two, many times you create Ainara by your own actions. <laughs> How? By creating situations or scenarios that people become jealous of you. Sometimes you cannot avoid to be on the spotlight. I'm a fellow, like all the wonderful hachamim in Aitora of the synagogues, whichever synagogue it may be, like it or not, you are on the spotlight. As I said the other day, you are on the spotlight, you can't escape. There's Hazan, Hazan, Darshan, Hachan, etc. You're in the spotlight. A regular person, how does he become on the spotlight? By doing something very good or by doing something not good at all. <laughs> Sometimes people are very generous with synagogues. Okay? And guess what? They say, don't mention my name. It happened to me the other day. Somebody sponsored. I'm not selling anything. I'm not buying. Uh, we'll see after my speech. <laughs> Anyways, you and I are on the same line of business, right? I, I know what you do in Lawrence Avenue. I know. Ooh, I reveal your identity. Maybe it means Lawrence, New York. I protected right. you, right? The five towns. Right, the five towns. Anyways. I'll tell my daughter. Thank you. So what a fellow tells me, Rabbi, uh, I like to sponsor the memorial board. Only? No, that one's still available for eighteen thousand. The one for twenty six. Twenty six is, is gone. Yeah. Both of them are gone. It's Miracle. Gone. But you know what they told me? Don't publicize my name. I know. Don't make me mishaberach. Yeah. Don't make the large sounds. 26,000 for the synagogue to wake everybody up, right? It says, I beg you, don't do it. And I respect that. First of all, it shows a certain level of humility. But you know what else it does? It protects the person from Ainara. Uh -huh. That's why the Tosafot says that sometimes the Ainara is created by the person themselves. Mm -hmm. Why the Torah encourages modesty? Not only modesty in the dress code, modesty on the way that a person behaves, the person functions, the person acts between people. Not to be flashy. To be flashy is not beneficial for the person. Sometimes you want them to be jealous so if they could God forbid, don't, but sure, but make. you know what? Jealousy, and that's what Yaakov Avinu says. I'm, I want you to bless every Jewish child of the Jewish nation, irrelevant that they are not from the tribe of Yosef. Do you know which tribe are you from? No. Do you I know don't, which don't. tribe? We'll see when Mashiach comes. <laughs> it may be a change. They say Halevi. Today. Okay. Mashiach oh, comes. My grandparents. You may be promoted to become a Kohen. Inshallah. Okay, you see? You didn't expect that. <laughs> Wait. I mean. I mean, you see? That's what's written in the Zohar Kadosh. That many Leviim, they will be promoted to Kohanim. Nice. But you may be from the tribe of Ephraim, or you may be from the tribe of Shimon, and you may be from the tribe of Asher. We don't know. Don't forget, historically speaking, that already in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, there was a split between the two and a half tribes and the ten and a half tribes. And later on, when it came to Sanherib and Yeroboam ben Nevad and all these colorful characters, that there was a split in the kingdom of Israel between Yehuda, Binyamin, 
and the rest of the tribes. And the 10 tribes eventually were exiled. Okay, so we don't know. But says Yaakov Avinu, for me, what type of Shevet you come from, it's secondary. The fact that you're a descendant of Abraham, Ishaq, and Yaakov, I want to give you an added insurance policy in your life. And this is what? Protection from Ayn Ara, like Ephraim and Menashe. And that's why I'm going to repeat the Gemara one more time, and will this will finish. I'm not expecting you to remember this in the Aramaic language that I'm going to say now, but for the benefit of the audience, I'm going to say it in Aramaic, and I'm going to say it in English. The Gemara writes concerning Ainara, Ana, Mizar'a de Yosef Ka'atina, I am a descendant of Yosef Asadik, de la shaltaba aina bisha, that the evil eye doesn't affect me. That's the statement of the Gemara. <clears throat> Yaakov Aminu says, I want you to add that insurance policy as an additional rider for every Jewish child. That the Ainara should protect them. Someone like me, I'm a magnet for Ainara. I'm saying this publicly. I'm a magnet. And I was told this by great hachamim from Israel. When I explained to them about certain situations and conditions that I was going through, and then one of them showed me that says, if your name happens to be Yosef, Yosef and jealousy, Kina, are the same value. 156. Nice. And I said this to somebody named Yosef. A rabbi approached me, and he tells me a tremendous amount of hardship that he's having. Not physically, professionally. And I said to him, I'm very surprised that you're going through this because I know who you are. But then I said to him, what is your name? He tells me, Yosef XYZ. I said, that's the answer. It's written in the holy books and I have it in writing. That someone named Yosef Gematria Kina. Kina. And if you're on the spotlight, like that Rabbi and I are, and many others, irrelevant if your name is Yosef or not, you are somehow, people look at you, people make comments about you, people praise you, sometimes people criticize you, which at the end of the day, it's fine, we are humans, but being on the spotlight, it comes with its, how do I say, with its, let's say, benefits, challenges. but many, many, many challenges as well, because you can't afford a rainy day. You can't afford a bad hurt day. You need to be on guard in a good way, in a positive way, but you know what? I always say this pasuk from the Gemara, Ana Mizar'adi Yosef Ka'atina. You know what? I'm doing God's work, or I believe that I'm doing God's work, I hope that God is happy with me. And the Ainara, in Yiddish they say, gay fifen. You know what that means? You know what it means? Beseda, you are envy of me, you are jealous of me, I don't know why. I can trade in some of my days and you'll tell me, you know, how good the days are or how challenging the days are. But you know what? David Amelech, I believe it comes from David Amelech that says, Aboteh Hashem. A person yes. who has trust, so to speak, in Akadosh Baruch Hu, always you will be surrounded Amen. by kindness. So I'm not uh, Baruch Hashem, I'm not uh, worried, Amazing. but we try to do the best that we can. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Have a beautiful Shabbat. And remember, bless your children directly or remotely. And by Ezzat Hashem, you'll have great nahat from them. Baruch Adonai Le'Aholam. Amen ve'amen. Rabbi Hanania ben Akashi Omer, Ratsa Kadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot Et Yisrael Lefichach, Irva Lehen Torah Mizvot Shene Emar, Adonai Hafez Leman Sitko, Yagdil Torah Ve'yadir Kaddish. Amen. Amen. Amen.